to a ling with Halgrim for the 13th time actually and uh, now we are both on YouTube and uh, Facebook and uh, if you like the class thank you for pushing the following button on both uh, youtube.com slash frikai and facebook.com slash frikai but now we are here for dancing and it's the uh, hulling or laus dance as I say or it's the oldest living uh, dance tradition here in northern Europe and uh, you could wonder why and I think it's uh, because of a, a hulling dance a dance which uh, uh, contains a lot of kind of the basics of uh, human movement like rolling jumping whirling kicking and so on so um, and we uh, have this kind of at least 3,000 years of a lot of documentation uh, mostly archaeologically when you go uh, uh, before the Viking era and um, actually going all the back to the Stone Age and uh, we know also quite many of the movements which they did then and they are doing now we also know about some of the spirituality in the um, uh, dance of Odin, uh, the Norse god for example which uh, was a god for the berserkers which uh, uh, were like often wolf or bear clothed uh, warriors which did dancing ahead of uh, battles and uh, to, to kind of achieve a state of mind and body prepared to kind of do this kind of shape shifting which they were talking about to kind of achieve this uh, force from the animals so today uh, I'm not focusing so much on the spiritual side more about how to prepare our bodies to be able to do kind of anything on impulse at least within this traditional dance world uh, so how to kind of throw yourself in any direction without getting hurt that's the main focus today some weeks ago I had this Berserker Holling class which focused a bit more on the spiritual uh, mind of um, state of mind uh, of uh, the Berserker dancing so check that out but uh, now um, we will have a little uh, warm-up then uh, I go first through a, a calm warm-up which is called Solkvedja it's like a sun salutation with uh, movements from our heritage here in uh, um, Scandinavia and after that we will uh, loosen up every joint to the music and uh, move further and further into the hulling dancing so are you ready? let's uh, do the Solkvedja then First then I will just uh, sing a little uh, song uh, from Hovamor which uh, is kind of a sun salutation <coughs> which uh, um, goes Eller er best med yta sonom og solar syn i heilund i se Ef mader ha fa nøyran vir løst at li hi so the text is in the post and uh, also a little translation. Now we take our hands around uh, an axe, let's say it's Mjölnir, and um, we spread our feet, spread your toes so you can grasp into the ground, <sighs> and we bend our knees as uh, we do nine chops. So I will explain a little bit this time because it's the first time here in the holding sessions with the soul kredja. So, grip your axe and breathe in. Breathe in. And the third time. And we move this hip quite forward. And then we take six circular over the head and reach up. The other direction. Try to open up in your chest here. Breathe in. Breathe in. Two more times. Come on. And this time, the right 
me goes through the window and I try to put my butt down at the floor, which might be difficult for uh, some. And then we have this cross with the left uh, leg over and then I take the axe and elbow into the left knee. And I watch to the opposite side, so I get this kind of nice twist in my back. And three long breaths. Okay, good. Then we release, we go a half round backwards with the sun, or med source. And we take the hip forward, breathe in, open up your chest and breathe out. So with the X on the back, we sink down with heavy heads and we kiss the ground. Or we could drink the water or wisdom from the well of Mimir. More on these things in the Viking workouts on Fridays. So we spread our eagle wings, we turn with the sun. Ah, this is a good stretch for me. How is it for you? Okay. And then we turn all the way until we are round. Here I try to do a, this kind of kinky balance, which is really crucial for the holding dancers. If it's too heavy for you, wait a little bit. But you can, uh, if you have the right leg in front, you can put the right hand in front and push with the elbow of the right arm down the thigh of the right leg. And then if you breathe in with the left hand, we have this side stretch here. And then we grip the toes and we take three long breaths. Well, that's good. So then we take the hands on the right side and we go into this bear dancing position. And we do push through the shoulders and we also work a little bit with the hip. So one, two, three, fury, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, that's good. Then we sink down with the hip, breathe in and we breathe out, pushing up into the mountain top. Then we breathe in with the heels up, sending a ripple through the back and breathe out. And breathe in through the ripple two more times. And And a last lynx roll, going for the dragon breath. <sighs> we push up a last time into the mountain top. Three long breaths. Come on. Reach for the floor with your heels. And with the right leg, we stretch it and place it in between our hands and we take the axe again, hip forward and we chop. Breathe in and sink down, drinking the water of the Nimil well. This time it's the opposite side, side. Did you recognize? Spread your eagle wings. We turn this time counter stun, counterclockwise, but I like more of the sun reference. And try to achieve balance here. I'm having my weight on my right ankle now. I could try this um, balance. Yes. 
and then we put the left hand on the right side of the left leg, pushing down the thigh with the elbow, and breathe in with the right hand this time. Feel this side stretch. With your toes and three long breaths. Okay, that's very good. Then we walk with the hands to place the weight on the left leg and the left knee twists through this window and we sit down on the butt. We take the, the axe again, we place the left elbow towards right knee, look to your right, try to relax in your hip and tighten the knot. And now we are twisting counter sun to get up. Here, and then we do the spiral chops to the left. Open up in the chest. And three. Few again. Fin. That's good, come on. Six. And the last three straight ahead. Bend your knees. So that was uh, the sun salutation for today. Uh, next time I will uh, explain a little bit more and you can also visit our Viking workouts on facebook.com slash uh, where I have uh, explained well these things. But now let's move more towards the dancing. And uh, for the dancing I will add some music now and we take focus on one and one uh, joint and let's uh, research a little bit the movement and uh, feel every limb of our body, okay? So... Uh Ground your feet. You should start to play with the head. For some of you, you might be a bit careful with the head. Just with small movements. Play a little bit with the Or with the mood. mood. The right shoulder. Yes. And nothing is wrong here. Just feel the movements. Right elbow. And the right hand. Let's try it after a wash. Left shoulder. Ah. 
So, that's very good. If you dared to let the music kind of uh, infect the whole system. Uh, in the end, I asked you to do a bit of um, throwing. And uh, yes, for the th throwing, it's quite important in this kind of Berserker preparation of our bodies in uh, holding dancing. So, we believe in the 1800s, it was uh, quite m much more kind of throwing of, uh, and risk taking in the holding dancing than uh, today. But when you throw kind of your limb with a little bit of acceleration and into a um, state of uh, tonus which is uh, quite relaxed, then this kind of throw can uh, bring your body out of balance. So, yeah. And then when you land or whenever you uh, are finished with the action, you could start to try, try to play with the balance and recover. Okay? So let's um, do this kind of soccer kick. And now I'm kicking with the right, I'm landing on the right, I'm trying to balance on the right. So let's do it once more. Yes. So now you saw that I was not kind of resisting much here. I went quite straight to the heel, which uh, makes balance much more difficult. So let's try to, to um, break a little bit or reduce the tempo. Okay, yes. And with the other leg. Yes. And with the right again. Yes. You see maybe that I use my left arm to prepare this kind of pull. It's almost pulling my leg to kick. So. Uh-huh. And with the left again. Okay. So that was some throws forwardly. With the legs, we could also do it backwards. Yes. Other side. Now I was aiming for my hand and I failed. <laughs> you can also not aim for anything. Just to. You could aim to lose balance, for example, or to achieve movement in space. So we could also do the same with the arms. So this is leaded by the arm at least. It was left to left, I could take right to left. Okay. And the other side. That was kind of initiated by both arms. So here I think that we don't need rules. We just need to uh, explore the possibilities. So, uh, and that is because we are not working on a specific learned movement material here. I believe that we grow up and we are always learning new material, uh, at least if we stay playful. And we are still, at my age, learning new stuff. And if we are only repeating <coughs> the same thing, I don't think it helps our traditional dance either. It's uh, uh, I, I, I believe it's good that every individual kind of contributes with this kind of experimentation and to, um, to um, play with your body into what we learn from the ancestors. So let's uh, now add some music and then we can play with a different kind of throws. Hmm. Thank you. 
Maybe we could try with the head? Okay. So again, this might be a nice little preparation for yourself when you start to feel warm. And um, uh, I think it's good to do this on a uh, kind of daily basis or weekly basis. And uh, you never know when it's helping you, but at least for me, it helps to avoid the common patterns all over again. So that was throwing the body. And uh, now I uh, would like to do some more basics before we go into the real traditional dancing. And uh, we are preparing the body now. So it's a kind of um, movement which starts with um, frontal roll, uh, roll, like a crow roll, as we say in Norwegian. Kråkerulle. Og så, um, and it goes as slow as possible. Try to take one by one vertebrae or joint. And then we get into the kruke position where we push up if possible. You could use uh, furniture to push up with your hands if it's too heavy. So then we, um, we can do this to some music. Let's do that. Okay, so sit down, hands down on the floor. Look at your stomach, place your head as close to the toes as possible. Slow up with the hands. And here I take vertebra, first vertebra. I start to crouch my legs together. And I lead with now the left leg. Heel as close to the butt as possible, and then I push up. Okay, and I go down, and then we kind of keep with the head here. Now we take more speed. Okay, to practice the neck strength. So that's good. And then we go on the right leg. Now, we push up, and to the head again, and keep with your neck, the left leg, yes, okay, so two things, uh, this is really important to strengthen and warm up the neck. For uh, afterwards, we will practice some collapsing techniques where it's important to be warm. And the third, uh, the second thing is if you sit down on your with your heels down, some of you might almost fall backwards. Then it's difficult to go here and get the heel close to the butt and then lean forward. So then it's good to have something sit like here have something heavy and move towards one side each time and do this kind of stretching. It's good for the Achilles and the ankle flexibility. So let's do this one more time. Hands, head, slow down with the hands. Slow down the rolling, lead with your left leg, fingers forward, push up, slow down, we go to roll and keep with the head, and change leg, two more times, come on. Use your hands on the 
furniture to, to shop if it's hard. Okay, so that's good. Um, please leave me any comment if you have uh, any uh, kind of comments or uh, questions on this. I'm trying to follow a little bit uh, the chat here. And uh, for the next uh, kind of preparation move, would be good to have a pullover for because we are going to um, practice the neck in a really kind of uh, hulling dance or martial arts, mixed martial arts way or berserker way. So, I think it's achievable for any which has a bit uh, strength in, uh, in the neck. If uh, you like it, it's better to do the, the exercise that I sh just showed you once uh, more again. So, what I do here is to put the pullover in a way that I can roll uh, backwards if I want. And I have my heels towards um, the butt. And actually with this hair knot, it's, uh, it might be painful, I will try. <laughs> so, I lift my hip and I push myself into this bridge position or bow position. And I go back again. It's quite important though that in this movement we are kind of try to prolong the neck. So we don't just do this movement, which might not be helpful, healthy. So let's do it five times together today. And uh, when you get stronger, you can have like three series of five repetitions, for example. Today, only one series. So up with your hip and go into the bridge and go back again. One more time. And three. Four. And five. Okay. So how did that go for you? It uh, might be quite heavy for the neck. So uh, it's get good to loosen up a little bit afterwards. Uh, if you didn't feel anything, you might go into this position and then hold the position and go a bit sideways, which is uh, good uh, training, but also uh, a little bit dangerous if you're not well trained from before in the neck. So then we don't need the pullover anymore. We are going for the um, normal bridge. So, then we take the heels to the butt, the fingers under the shoulder, up to the same positions as before. You can go to this middle position with the head, and then breathe in, and breathe out, up. And here I have my heels in the butt uh, floor, if I'm able to, and I breathe in, and I breathe out, with my chest forward. And push through the shoulders and the elbows. And we go down again, calmly with good time. So that was the bridge. These are all very good uh, preparation for throwing yourself in any direction because we have opened up every vertebra of the back and. Um, we have no, now also uh, practiced a little bit this kind of landing. We can do it a bit more to some music. You can see I meet the rhythm at the floor with the toes and I don't go all the way down to the heel if I don't need to. 
can stay now. Jump again. And leave. Okay. Now one more and one more break. And now. Okay. So that uh, was uh, for me at least a uh, nice preparation for what is coming now. I'm not teaching uh, like straight movements of holding today. It's more about how you can use what you have uh, of movements or holding dance movements that you have learned to um, liberate them a bit. So, um, one thing which is uh, uh, one concept which is quite important is um, to collapse because when we want to learn uh, new acrobatics to create new tricks or to learn old tricks it's good to, uh, instead of having these big soft bags to land on, maybe you don't have that now in the corona time. It's good to be able to practice at the floor in your living room, right? So um, then it's important to collapse and then we will go through some collapse uh, movements now. And then we will also go uh, to uh, explosivity and also how to transfer energy from one movement to another. So. Um, for uh, the first collapse, it's good to to kind of make this kind of Easter egg of your back. You see this one? It's very different from that flat back. So meet the floor like that, and then collapse. That is that that, that is a way to kind of um, absorb the shock. So if I'm here. I can practice to go up in this Easter egg and relax down again. Up and down. Up and down. And this is actually also a nice little sit up practice. Okay. And now um, we can do this kind of kick up. So. And what I do is that I breathe in before I jump, I retain the breath and then I breathe out when I hit the floor. Yeah, so this is impossible to show in slow-mo. <laughs> so uh, you just have to try it and try to really um, make this egg of the body before you start. So let's try it together. How is it going? It's a uh, it might be a little bit painful in the beginning, but after a while it's quite relaxing, or relaxing actually. So, then um, we can uh, go into all this uh, kind of uh, frontal uh, handsprings and uh, fish jumps and so on. Uh, a lot of uh, my uh, kind of students in the beginning, they are a bit, uh, and myself also when I learned it, I was afraid of hurting myself. So, uh, for example, when I do a handspring, um, in the beginning, it, maybe I don't get around enough. So then, it's uh, I can try to collapse in a way. Let's try. Yes. So, I don't try to resist, I try to absorb and roll. So let's try it once more. Yes. And if I'm landing a bit more, now you see before the landing, I take my legs in like that, then it's really easy to collapse. If I'm landing like that, it becomes a bit more shockful. Like, 
hand on backwards rolling is quite good. Good training. So I, I reduce the tempo, the speed with my hands just before I hit my butt. Let's try it together. Yes. And then we could maybe try it from the bridge if you manage the bridge. Here, let's try. We have a bad handspring and we push up a little bit. You see? One more time. Push up in the bridge and then I push from the hands. You see that I sweep the floor with the hands, but I allow myself to roll. Then if you have this, it's uh, much easier to practice handsprings. So let's do a double handspring with double hands now. Yes. And uh, what is quite important here is to, when I bounce here, I go as quickly as possible to the hands. Uh, so when I do that, this rebounds from the floor pulls my hip upwards. So you see, uh, if I do slow, then I have used spent my momentum. So one more time. Okay, so that was a double handspring. It's not uh, easy to learn in uh, as quick as this, but practicing bridge and practicing this collapsing technique will help you a lot on your uh, home training. So you could also try with one hand, and maybe you have seen that I have used this kind of, um, kind of, uh, uh, I leave the floor in that way <laughs> and uh, um, in gymnastics it's more normal to do this kind of stuff but then it's very easy to slide on slippery floor and in uh, dancing we often have that so if you want to remain more in place and have control then it's better to go backwards with one leg I feel so when I go with, uh, let's say, uh, with my right uh, leg, I tend to do use my right hand. For example, if I want to, I don't know, pick up something. Let's say I pick the hat and I want to, to pick it up. So that's a, a fun way to do that. But we go up and in the bounce, here I sit even deeper than with two hands because I'm not that strong in one hand. So you could practice like this to try to take uh, quite much of the weight on the right arm. So let's just go for it with a collapse now. Okay, and that's now I was bending my hip a bit early because I knew I wanted to collapse, but that is actually what you need to do if you need have to collapse, not try to stretch all the way. Now I will stretch the hip. Okay, so that was uh, one hand and two hand handspring. Let's uh, go to the, this uh, fist jump as well. Then I could sit down here and I uh, now I'm just going through the rhythm because rhythm is so important in acrobatics as well. So dum, da, ram. So dum, da, ram. You see? When I let the butt fall forward a little bit, then it's time to kick and uh, go all in. 
And when you go all in, of course, you can hurt yourself a little bit, but then you can collapse in the landing. Down, down, down. You see. Mm -hmm. uh, what you also can do in this technique with the fingers in the bridge position under the shoulders, you can push quite much with the hands, which make it much easier to get up. Down, down, down. Right? Um, if I kick too early, I don't say dum, 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 but dum, drum, then this will happen. Dum, drum. I go over and it might hurt the uh, neck a bit more. So, uh, in, and if I'm too slow, let's, uh, or too late, dum, dum, dum. Yeah, and it's much easier to hurt yourself. So, dum, dum, dum. It's a rhythm for me at least. So let's try together. One, two, three, four. Dum, dum, dum. Okay. So that was uh, three frontal moving uh, movements. And frontal moving is kind of very used in uh, holding dancing. And uh, like um, oblique movements are not so used, at least in the acrobatics. But uh, we do quite some this kind of movements, swipes, which is a bit more oblique, but, um, but normally the head is uh, quite much in control. But you might do the same movements Of course, it's much more uh, difficult balance-wise. But in the intro dance today, I did a handspring, which is oblique. So I could show it, but it's then you need to have a good handspring uh, on one hand before it's uh, any use of trying. <laughs> so if I want to go that direction, I kick to that direction and I put down my leg. I move with my sh left shoulder and then I hit the floor with the heel which makes this swing leg swing around and if I let my that leg this left leg pull me it might become like this you see and here it's a I need to really stretch all the way if I want to land on my feet. But if I don't do, let's say I'll risk a bit more now and see if I collapse. Okay, so instead of trying to fight all the way up, I try to just admit or or accept that I'm going to fall and then I just search down with kind of um, uh, sharing my body all over the surface so not landing on one point okay so uh, you could practice this with two hands which I'm not used to now but um, uh, at least it's a possibility and you could go down in this kind of animalistic position and you could throw the leg around yourself with less uh, risk, risk from here. So let's see. In this. It's kind of the same movement. One more time. Left leg pulls you and I look down all the way until the landing. So then, if you have that, it's much easier to learn the other handspring, which is going uh, on an oblique way. And you might also use this kind of movements from whirling dancing. I could, I could try it now, even though the floor is a bit slippery here. So 
that was one way of kind of uh, accepting maybe if I want to go here in a holding hat kick uh, and it's a wrong entrance I could go for this instead so that was some preparations for uh, the possibility of going a bit wild <laughs> and uh, you also saw in the um, uh, starting solo today that I was uh, jumping backwards into fist jump which is uh, looking like this with a collapse and this is quite scary to learn but being able to collapse is a kind of crucial thing I feel so And uh, to learn to collapse in this position. It could be good to go to this kind of low bridge and jump up with one leg. Yeah, you see? Let's try it once more. I could try with both legs. And if you practice that quite much, it's easier to go for it uh, with both arms. And uh, of course, this uh, jump is good to do on the madras uh, or in the sofa. <laughs> Just make sure that you don't hit the lamps. Mm -hmm. um, and you might also learn it, learn it through a failed makako. Uh, long time since I did that, but. Uh, I felt it was, it was actually the way I learned it, that I was going to one side, like this, and makako is more like this, yeah, like a capoeira move, so if you could do uh, like this, and then go for quitting to go to one side, but a little warning, if you just if you first learn it to one side, it's often difficult to take away this, this movement. Okay, uh, that was a little bit about uh, collapsing and the uh, advantages about uh, being able to collapse. And uh, like to transfer energy is also quite important. If you have a lot of energy that you want to not land uh, in once, you could do for example, I jump through this, or I just take up this, and I jump, and I go to the hand, like this, and I go into kicking. It's uh, much easier if I'm quick as also with the handspring, so, thumb, ta da Instead of thumb, 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 then it's hard to get through. So in this movement, let's say we are here, and we thumb, thumb. So I absorb the shock in the leg. I'm not going up again. When I go up, it's I'm already on my hand, and then I look to the side. To open up my hip and then it's easier to do this move which you could easily practice at the floor yeah so this is kind of transferring the energy from the landing leg through the body and out through the hand so that's a quite important uh, aspect of it and then you also have the explosivity to be able to do this kind of uh, acceleration in the dance. <sighs> One way of practicing it is to kind of attach your uh, nail, your feet to the ground and twist as much as you manage and then <sighs> let go of one leg. So if I, switch, uh, if I twist counter sun 
and put my weight on the left uh, right leg. Then in the end I have to let go of the leg. Yes. So uh, this I use when I do I did it when I did this handspring. Let's let's see now. I'm not doing a continui, continuity of power. I'm trying to accel accelerate. Let's see. Yeah, and uh, it's more evident uh, in the knocker spread in the fist jump. Let's say I'm doing fist jump now without hands. Oh. That is really quick. So uh, then it's so important to be able to concentrate, which is easiest to practice in big movements. Let's say the roundhouse kick. Then I have my left forward to you. I turn 190 degrees. I go up with my arms and my left knee. And then comes my second knee. And then it starts to be hard for my stomach. Let's see how it goes. Yes. So uh, some of the goal here in the roundhouse kick in the holding is to land on both legs contemporarily. Then if you do that once more, then you're ready to progress. Yes. And I breathe out just like in a lot of martial art techniques. There, where it's most hard. So then I will do the same with stretching out the left leg now and not the right. Yeah. So you see, uh, it's a bit harder, but I managed to land on both legs. So let's try with some uh, music. Now I will stretch out both, both legs. Yeah. Did you try? Let me say, uh, I'm really curious about some of you which have not done it before. If it's uh, possible to learn it in this way, quite quickly. So, arms. Arms left and then right. Let's try together. Five, six, seven, eight. Two. Yeah, so this was a little bit about explosions. Of course, you could uh, check out the difference of and how that works for you. Some of you might uh, feel that you get as high with this slow jump, but for me, which I'm not born with really quick muscle fibers, then it's uh, uh, important for me to almost fall down and get this instant feedback from the ground and do a kind of shout out. <laughs> and it feels also good. So that was uh, three concepts. It was collapsing, transfer of energy, and also this explosivity, which you can practice a lot without lifting weights. Just doing these uh, exercises helps a lot of uh, dancers. Uh, and in the end, you can kind of top it with some uh, free weight training if you want. So uh, that was uh, quite uh, some uh, tips on acrobatics and um, we started um, with some training on how to throw your body. So if you have already learned some holding dance movement, you can practice that with the throwing of the body. And if you don't uh, know so much holding dance movements, you can just search uh, for, um, for the workshops with Frikar on YouTube 
or you can also see uh, quite many classes on facebook.com slash frifer. So then I will thank you for today on Friday 9.30 uh, we will have uh, this uh, or Friday morning. We will have Viking workout, which is um, old uh, or ancient body training, not so um, kind of related to dance, more to just a general practice for for human beings, uh, um, used for hunters and warriors and uh, uh, other kind of athletes back in the days, and also dancers. So that's on Fridays. Uh, next Tuesday, 6 p.m. I'm here at youtube.com slash frikar and facebook.com slash frikar. Hope to see you there. Um, and thank you so much for everyone doing some donations on PayPal or uh, Vips. That makes us, uh, it make it possible for me to continue to give free classes for the kids in these uh, Corona days. So thank you so much. And then uh, let's do a dance together in the end. Hmm. Thank you so much, see you next week and enjoy your evening.